It's practically hard to find a hockey fan who doesn't know who Connor McDavid is because he is such a well-known athlete. The majority of his supporters will tell you that he is tremendously quick, unbelievably skilled, one of the finest hockey players in the world, if not the best, and that he has had ups and downs due to injuries in order to get where he is now. But how much does the average person actually know about one of the NHL's top players? Having said that, there are some really interesting facts about McDavid that might win you over even more. Appeared in a country music video. The music video for Brett Kissel's song A Few Good Stories, which features Walk Off the Earth, was released on November 6, 2020. McDavid and his dog Lenny make a fleeting appearance in the video. Although McDavid's visit was quite brief, it was unusual for him because, as was previously indicated, he often avoids the limelight. We may get to witness him come out of his shell more frequently as he ages. Charity Work In his brief career, he has already accomplished a great lot, including setting a record for the quickest goal in NHL history and winning Rookie of the Year. However, did you know that Connor has a wonderful humanitarian side as well? At the age of 16, Connor began working for the Kia Foundation, a nonprofit organization. The foundation focuses on providing aid to underprivileged kids all over the world. Since he began working with the foundation, Connor has assisted in raising over $3 million for it. McDavid decided not to have surgery at the last minute, changing his career. In the 2019 offseason, McDavid's rehabilitation process was well documented. His season was ended by a terrible knee injury, and his future in sports was called into question. He might never be the same skater again because of the torn ligaments. He had to decide quickly between rehab and surgery, which may have prevented him from playing the entire upcoming season. It was a form of rehabilitation that had never been carried out by an athlete, but McDavid completed it very quickly and was able to resume skating considerably sooner than expected. Even though he wanted to play in preseason games, the Oilers had to prevent him from doing so because medical professionals did not believe he would be prepared. Loyalty to Toronto was immediately abandoned. What many Toronto supporters probably won't tell you, or maybe they don't know, is that he really took a jab at the team before the NHL draft when he was chosen by the Edmonton Oilers, and it's obvious his allegiances to the team of his former boyhood aren't all that strong. When questioned about how difficult it would be to transfer allegiances if he were selected by a team other than Toronto in 2015 interview, he categorically responded, Not very hard. Your loyalty goes to the team you're playing for, and with the Leafs and how they've been playing of late, it's hard to be a Leafs fan. In essence, McDavid was providing the political response, but in doing so, he also made fun of the Maple Leafs' losing record. Since he was 9 years old, he has worn number 97. Even though he may have started off as a Leafs supporter, one thing about one of the best players in the game with one of the most famous numbers hasn't really changed. McDavid has consistently worn the number 97. Yeah, I think I've been 97 since I was about 9, he responded, when questioned about the Leafs jersey his dad had manufactured for him and if he wore his number. The jersey had McDavid's birth year. His girlfriend designed the house. Social media users shared images of McDavid's Edmonton home around a year ago. Many were in awe at the property size and design, and in recent months, Architectural Digest presented viewers with a film giving a thorough tour of the residence. It turns out that Lauren Kyle, McDavid's girlfriend, designed the home. McDavid has money to burn now that he is a superstar. With that money, he hired Lauren Kyle, his longtime girlfriend, to construct a home for him that has garnered a lot of attention. Kyle works as an interior designer. Despite the fact that the house is gorgeous in and of itself, the overwhelming usage of black, white, and gray has some people being unkind. According to their notes, the home is incredibly dreary and completely devoid of color or personal connection. Even if the ceiling on the basketball court is a little low and not the best for three-point shots, we would say the house is rather attractive and we wouldn't mind living there. The neighbors of McDavid were unkind to Connor's parents. How do you handle a situation where your child is firmly entrenched in something and you are unable to pry him away? That was the case for Connor McDavid with hockey. He was so determined to get better that he would practice for hours on end in the driveway. He would stay till he was satisfied with his own performance. While that is some serious drive, it also worried the neighbors who, it seems, noticed how frequently McDavid was outside and suspected his parents might be setting him up to do it. It was falsely believed by many that McDavid's father, Brian, was forcing him to practice. Brian claims that he did tell Connor that practicing and working hard was necessary to become the best. At the same moment, Brian was unable to stop McDavid despite his best efforts. When allegations began to circulate that his parents were pressuring him to practice, Connor apparently became quite furious. Connor is superstitious. 
McDavid is rumored to be superstitious, like many hockey players. Although we don't have personal experience with any of these superstitions, it has been reported that he wears lucky underwear, enjoys the same music, consistently takes the same number of shots each day, packs his bag in the same manner, parks in the same location, and does a number of other things. There is a tale about him asking his mother to take the back seat of a car once, since he was sitting in the front seat on the way to a huge game his team had just won. He was worried that he would change the routine. While most athletes have their things, we'll suppose that he is no longer nearly as superstitious. For instance, at the conclusion of a pregame warm-up, his teammate Leon Dreisaitl remains on the ice as the final player and shoots the puck from his own zone into the opposing goal. He always does it. It's just part of his routine. Milan Lucic was someone McDavid did want to play with. Oilers supporters are undoubtedly well aware of this, but McDavid responded that Milan Lucic would be his first choice out of all the players when asked who he might like to play alongside in the future. Ironically, the two guys did end up playing together, but it didn't work out all that well. Why did McDavid mention Lucic? At the time, Lucic was an NHL workhorse who was also fairly productive. The idea of having an offensive juggernaut on his line who could handle business if anyone took chances may have appealed to McDavid. Ironically, neither of those things actually occurred because both players were Edmonton Oilers, and Lucic was frequently chastised for picking his battles, showing no support for teammates while playing against his previous opponents and taking terrible penalties. His older brother was also a hockey player. There aren't the only members of one family who play the game, as is frequently the case with major talents. In reality, the Stalls and Subans of the world are unusual, and one child typically succeeds greatly while the other does not. McDavid's older brother Cameron also participated in the game. Cameron, meanwhile, was not nearly as devoted to the sport and never really advanced past the CCHL and COJCHL. In seven postseason games during his last season, Cameron scored six points. Being Connor McDavid's sibling must be challenging when both men decide to pursue hockey. It takes a good man to be supportive and not let it get you down when you don't even make it to the NHL and your younger brother goes on to become the best player in the league. McDavid's father served as his coach. It's cool to have your dad coach you when you're a kid. That being said, it's probably pretty uncommon for someone to achieve the level of success McDavid as if his father wasn't his coach during some of his most formative years. In Aurora, Ontario, Brian McDavid coached his son when he was a player. In many respects, McDavid's father, who played with him on his junior team, is to blame for the passion and early skill set he acquired that allowed him to go to higher levels of hockey. The group eventually won four championships. McDavid's mother desired him to be a skier. Oddly enough, while Connor's father supported the growth of his hockey career, his mother wanted him to try out another sport. Connor's mother, Kelly, didn't initially think he would develop into the phenomenon he did, and for a long time, she wanted him to become a skier. McDavid, who preferred to play hockey every waking minute, didn't take to skiing, and Kelly eventually came to the conclusion that she would never be able to wean Connor off the rink. She immediately started encouraging him to pursue his hockey dreams. Did you know about any of these? Leave your opinions in the comments below.